song had a lasting impression on me i always find myself humming this song very often and especially why because as i look back to that day and moment when i saw it live on the stage i recollected it that it's not just a song but the person whom i met a few minutes before the start of influence in 2022 you remember uh, we were standing in the queue for registration and we started chatting yeah i remember Yeah, uh, and I remember it was you said that it was your first time to the event, and little did I know that I, I will find you on the stage as an opening keynote speaker of the event. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, you are living your songs every moment, and that humility was so heartwarming and connecting to me, especially a singer like you. And today we are welcoming you on our podcast. Welcome, Peter. to our podcast your story your glory we are so grateful to have you here with us uh hari welcome to you also from india thank you so much deepak and welcome peter i'm really excited to listen to your story because this story what deepak just shared i heard it and i know the kind of impact that you had and your song had on him and truly then after knowing you from uh, the songs the work that you do it has been really a touching experience for me so and we are very sure most of our audience uh, would have heard your songs and today they are going to know a bit more about you from your stories so welcome to your story your glory peter thank you thanks to both of you i'm uh, very happy to be here uh, peter you know you live the humility that the song talks about we would like to know and please share with us how this song this particular song happened to you uh well it's interesting cuz you know in the in the past with my music when i was you know just doing a lot of touring as a singer songwriter i would always tell long stories about the the background of the song um but as i done a lot more speaking work and facilitation and that kind of stuff i actually say a lot less and i give it more just like an access point to for people to latch on to the song so when i play come down the song you just played um uh, you know rather than telling the whole back story i i normally just say now this is a song about letting go and uh you know i invite people in that moment to think about something that they might let go of uh in order to make room for something new and what they might like to think about what that something new might be so maybe that's breathing in gratitude or um uh, you know the good feeling in your heart to be amongst colleagues or whatever that might be and just breathing out any of the things that aren't serving you so uh i will though give you the back story that i don't normally give uh just seeing as we have an opportunity to talk a little more deeply actually uh that song happened at, at a, sort of a, a big transition time in my life i was um i i had gone through a, a divorce and i lost uh, my house and and uh then this was this was like my number one fear coming true my my parents had gotten divorced and we lost the house and and so my whole goal in life was to never have that happen and uh then it happened <laughs> and so and so i was you know i i i sort of felt like i kind of came awake for the first time in my life and i realized that i had uh, just a lot of uh, exploration to do and things that i needed to understand and patterns i needed to unlearn and you know traumas i needed to heal and um so i did all kinds of work and read all kinds of books um but in part of that uh i went on a trip to hawaii i just had this solo trip there and just had the most kind of transformative experience just just the 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 land in hawaii is is just breathtaking you know you wake up in the morning and you're already inspired when you just open yeah. your eyes um and i i happened to to meet this woman who when i was there uh who was this sort of magical being at that point you know part of the the trauma i guess was like trying to find 
a new person and trying to be like immediately like back in love and like, okay, I'm, I feel good again. I've, I've, I've sort of filled the emptiness that, that was inside of me. Um, and instead through talking with her, cause she was such a conscious person and, you know, just, just such an inspiring wise soul. Um, she really helped me uh, stay a bit grounded. And I sort of just consciously chose to, to, to not kind of go off into sort of like dreamland, but to, to, to stay, try to keep my feet on the ground. Mm. And uh, in the end, we we didn't decide to be in a relationship together. We decided to be uh, like the, the best of friends. And, and uh, you know, that's that's been an amazing friendship in my life. And then, of course, if you really listen to the lyrics, there's so much of the the landscape of Hawaii that you hear in the descriptions and all of the the wisdom uh, that that exists when you look at nature and uh, you know, the path of destruction, the lava flow, but then rich in nutrients and all these things grow. And, and, you know, no matter what the sky looks like, you can find beauty in it, even if it's raining or, you know, whatever that might be. So, so much of the, the wisdom of the nature of, of that land is, is also in those lyrics. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. Hmm. Lovely. Some songs, you know, they, um, they take a long time to write and you're really sort of have to think about it and uh but i came home from that trip uh and i i, I stopped in la to because i have some people that i work with there and i sat down with uh, the producer and uh he just started building that that drum drum beat and he's like you know like why don't you get started on a on a on a on some melody or whatever and it was like like I just wrote the whole thing in an instant. I just sat down at the piano, I played the chorus, and then I wrote all of the lyrics like almost instantly. And he, he turned around and looked at me. He's like, oh my gosh. Like he was sort of couldn't believe how quickly that I wrote the song, but it was just, it was so ripe and and ready for me to to capture oh, yeah. it. So yeah, it, it was a very, very special one. Thank you so much for sharing this beautiful story behind it. Yeah, my pleasure. indeed a special story. Yeah. Yes. So this is the story behind this very powerful song. Definitely a powerful song for Deepak and me. Uh, Peter, from music artist to keynote speaker, from big picture thinking to mental wellness, from writing personal songs for your audience to podcasts. I mean, you are inspiring people in several ways. We would love to hear your story about how it all started. And how is it evolving now? For the first 15 years of my of my adult life, I was a touring singer songwriter and I had a very singular vision. It was I wanted to play Carnegie Hall and Sydney Opera House and Massey Hall. And, and that that to me was that's what success is. Um, and it was playing these things called concerts and audiences and songs on the radio. And that was that was that was the very clear vision and every waking moment of my life and including when I was sleeping, I was thinking about only that. Um, and, you know, it took, it took about 10 years. And then eventually I, I did have a song that, uh, you know, did, did okay on the radio here in Canada and started having bigger shows. Um, but there was, you know, there was still a lot, a lot of a road ahead. And, and I was, I was willing to, to keep going on that road. And, there were other things that were starting to emerge uh, where people would say to me, Hey, I come to your show as much for what you say in between the songs as for what you as, as much as for the songs. And so there was this interest in, in my storytelling and in my speaking. And um, I mean, there was a whole bunch of series of events that happened. So, you know, Deepak um, would have heard the story that I told at NSA about um, playing a, concert in in a small town in Alberta and you know never been there before not expecting anybody to be there and there were hundreds of people that knew all of my music and uh you know long, long story short this youth mentoring program had been using my music as part of their their yes. teachings and so hundreds of kids every summer were being exposed to my music and they had actually organized this um this concert because they wanted me to work for them and they wanted me to come do this mentoring work with them, uh, which I, I said yes to. I'm, I'm about to fly there in two days and, and do it again. I've been doing it every summer for the last 10 years. Uh, I'm now one of the directors of that program. Um, and so that was this really kind of unexpected thing that happened by having music out in the world that certainly wasn't something that was 
on my radar when I decided I was going to be a songwriter. I wasn't expecting to do youth mentoring work as part of that. Um, but the people that I became friends with uh, who, who run that program, they were the ones that first encouraged me to, to create some kind of keynote concert. My friend Dave, he's a teacher. He said, you know, I, I work in schools all the time. He said, we, we bring in these people who come and give inspirational messages. He's like, I've seen how you are with youth. I've seen how you are on stage in your concerts. If you put that together, I think it could be a really powerful thing. And so I built my first keynote concert. Uh, it was called Why I Seek Discomfort. And it's about you know the awkwardness of, of standing in front of a microphone and singing a song and the discomfort of that. And yet all of the amazing things that happen when you're willing to do uncomfortable things. Um, and so I did that for in high schools and stuff for, for many years and youth conferences. And then eventually um, I was asked to uh, do a keynote for grownups. Um, and uh, it, it was a conference for entrepreneurs. And I had this realization that the life of an entrepreneur is so similar to the life of an artist where you have no set paycheck, no set hours. You're very passionate about this thing. You have no idea if it's going to work. It's probably not going to work, um, but you throw yourself into it anyways. Like that's what an artist is and that's what an entrepreneur is. And so as I was delivering that keynote, I felt 500 people just kind of lean in and I realized, oh my gosh, this is, this is a, this is a special thing. And after the, the keynote, I was, you know, standing at the table at the back, like I normally do at my concerts. And after my concerts, people walk up to me and they, you know, they're often, they want a hug or they have tears in their eyes or they're sharing stories with me. And I had the same reaction, even though I hadn't just given a concert. And I was like, oh, I guess what I do is not limited to the definition of a concert. It could be a keynote or a keynote concert. And then, and then I started getting into facilitation work where I would give a keynote for an organization and they would say, hey, we, we'd like to, to do more work with you. And so I, I, at the time, I was like, well, I didn't know what that looked like. So I was like, I could do another keynote. Um, but then I realized like, oh, I could do deeper kind of organizational work. And so I became certified as a facilitator. And now I get to facilitate events and retreats and workshops and design all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, the podcast that I do with my friend, Dr. Robin Henley Defoe is another extension of that. It's it's not so much that it's a concert or it's a keynote or it's a facilitation or it's a podcast or whatever that might be. I think it's just, um, you know, a quality of, of kind of caring about, you know, humans and being really interested in, in how we work and, and basically taking things that don't exist yet, right. They're out there in our consciousness. They're out there in the, in the, in the, in the stars or whatever that might be. And, pulling them into things that now exist. And it can be called a variety of different things. And, and that's what I'm actually interested in. And that's what I actually love to do. And so it sometimes looks like a whole bunch of different things. So beautiful. So from a musician to a key, keynote concerts, and I'm sure you are enjoying your journey. Yeah, I mean, it's it's always, uh, sometimes it's it's disorienting. I have to really catch my breath because it's it changes so quickly. And, and certainly with the pandemic, uh, you know, everything was canceled as it was for for so many of us. Um, and so then I I became I built a whole virtual studio and I I had to learn a whole new skill set there. And and uh and that really caused my speaking career to explode because I could do five keynotes in a day all around the world virtually. And yeah. and so I've been I've been trying to, in some ways, just sort of catch my breath and figure out like what are the what are the 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 most essential things that I want to do. I I just spent the last week working on a new album, and I I feel really connected to how important it is for me to make new music. But yesterday I I gave a keynote and I I delivered a workshop for a you know an organization here in Canada, and that was really meaningful as well. So I think the answer for me is to. Um, be thoughtful around kind of what I say yes to and, and um, make sure that everything that I'm showing up for, I can show up wholeheartedly and, and, uh, and enjoy it. Cause I think when I say yes to too many things, then, you know, I, I sometimes run the risk of doing these great things, but not really uh, appreciating it or kind of feeling burnt out on the other side of it. Absolutely. Thank you, Peter, for sharing your story with us and this journey from 
being a musician and now impacting so many lives, not only through music, but also through your speaking and facilitation. I always uh, have read about you and I, I read that you are the thunderbolt for the soul. A lot mm -hmm. of people call you this. You connect with your audience souls beautifully. We are very sure it's not easy. And to and I heard you that you try to find the overlap of your experience that of your that to your audience. Mm. How do you do that? I, I heard you saying that that I try to overlap my experience with my audience. Yeah, I mean that's incredibly important to me. The root of that actually comes from from music. Like if you think about what a great song is, right? It's somebody sharing something from their experience, but in a way that we as the listeners can see ourselves in there. Um, so in my keynotes, I, I've always tried to kind of recreate that experience for people. And the way I do it in, in, in that modality is I do a lot of research. Um, and so of course I find out about the industry and the people who are in the audience. And I actually do interviews with some of the people that are going to be in the audience. Um, and I hear about their experiences and I ask them questions about, you know, some of their proudest moments and some of their challenges. And I, I just try to understand what their lives are like. And as I'm listening to them, I'm I'm thinking, all right, okay, what are the common themes here? Or what are the what are the things that I can latch on to? Or what are the what are the things that I have in my life, uh, tools that I have that can be of service to somebody who's in their experience? And and that's I think has been a really key part of my the growth of my speaking career is um, you know, I, I feel very fortunate to hear this comment all the time as I, I hear from clients, they say, no one's ever cared about us as much as, as you have. And I want to make sure that I, I honor the people that are there. And I don't feel like I would honor them if I just opened up a can and delivered a talk. I, I honor them by finding out who they are and by creating something that's specifically relevant for them. Thank that's you. so powerful, Peter. Definitely one word that comes to my mind is impact. I'm very sure not many artists or not many speakers will be actually doing that. I mean, the very first point of connect is the client, right? You are trying to talk to the audience members. And that's the reason people find you as the most powerful speaker that they have met who has connected with their souls. Now I'm really looking forward to being in one of your concerts and seeing it live. But okay, <laughs> with that, I have another question for you, Peter. So what I feel is that majority of artists look at creating music albums and performing on the big stage and to be in the limelight, right? You have taken a very unique uh, approach to songwriting for people, to people to have their own songs. Hmm. Uh, for their personal life, you are creating the songs which are unique to them, which might yeah. not go in public, but they impact their life. That's very powerful when we hear this. And surely the song creating process would be really evolving for the people who are doing it, right? For your clients at that time. Mm -hmm. I would love to know, how is it helpful to you? What's in it for you? How are you evolving the process of song creation, personal song creation for your clients? It is harder in a way. If I'm just writing a song for myself, I can write a song and then if it's not good, uh, then I'll just you know, rework it and write another one. And and if you have a specific person that has a specific story and a specific song and there's a deadline, uh, then it's a whole different thing. The thing that I like about writing the song for somebody else is you're not sitting there wondering like, what am I going to write about? You have your subject, um, but of course you then have to figure out what's the what's the what's the unique angle or what's the key words or what's what's the special thing that I want to there's this thing that I want to say but how do I say it in a way that is still kind of artful and musical and and um, you know all, all those kind of considerations it's a really beautiful experience the energy that we drive from that experience that fulfillment that I hear in mm. your conversation that you get I think that more than anything even more than performing at the best of your uh, stages, right? So, mm. They're all good. <laughs> I'll take it all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Peter, uh, you know, we have always heard and experienced that also, that we are always greatly influenced by close five people in our circle. Mm. We are what we are because of the support and inspiration from those five people. Would you like to share about those folks in your life, in your family, friends, or mentors in your life? Yeah, I mean, obviously the first person that comes to mind is my my partner Tess so she's definitely the person I I spend the most time with and um just a a really heart-centered like just big heart-centered uh soul who um yeah I think the, the one of the biggest influences that she's had in my life is is we we've really done a lot of great work together um uh, you know, Brene Brown talks about like we we only do the, our real work like in relationship, not necessarily romantic relationship, but but if we just sort of walk through life um, solo, um, we we don't kind of have the 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 triggers and the the interactions and the things that sort of cause us to almost see ourselves in the mirror and then grow into the people that we really want to be and um, be able to to give and receive love in the ways that we really want to receive it, and so. Obviously, you know, tests uh, comes to mind first and foremost. Well, it's interesting because I, I do think about my family and uh, I, and when I say my family, I mean like my family of origin, you know, my parents and my siblings, um, they had a huge influence on the the early years of my life. And I moved out very young. I was, I was on my own uh, by the time I was 16 and even between kind of 13 and 16, I was on my own quite a lot. Um, and so uh, I, I feel sometimes like I, I've spent most of my life um, away from my family, and yet they're they are such beautiful souls. My siblings are 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 just the warmest, kindest, loveliest people on earth, and so I I, I see them. I'll group them as 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 one. Um, just uh, there's just the the genuinely kind humans. Um, that's that's kind of where I come from in my family. So I, I feel influenced by that. I, I think of, uh, you know, the 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 president of my my speaking agency, Martin, uh, and his wife, Farah, they're, they've changed my life. They've really um, brought me into this whole speaking world and, and um, had a, a massive impact on, on the work that I that I do. Um, I think about my my team, uh, who have they challenge me uh, all the time and they they've allowed me to grow my business and, and um, they, they kind of push me to, to be a better leader. And then uh, I, and then I think of uh, my friend, uh, Dr. Robin Henley Defoe, who I, I do the podcast with, That's and it, yeah. um, we've, we've been able to spend so much more time together uh, as a result of doing that podcast together. And, and um, we do presentations together. We're, we're about to run a, a little, retreat together um yeah I, I mean i could keep going i think about my friends michael and ron that i ran the leadership retreat in costa rica with i think about the my facilitation community i think about my mastermind community uh there's just i have a rich life with the people that i i get to spend my time with my gosh the the working with those students has changed my life because i go there every summer and i'm i'm there to men, you know mentor them and teach them a, about kindness and integrity. And I've realized over the last 10 years that in order to really teach uh, kindness and integrity and those kind of things, your number one job is to, is to be that. Yeah. Uh, and so they've pushed me to um, just get in alignment in my own life. That's amazing because that actually shows that like how grateful we are for the people in our life, because mm -hmm. we are what we are because of them, right? Yeah. Some fun time. Deepak, should I go ahead? Yes, please go ahead. Okay. Peter is smiling. So the fun time, Peter, is that we'll have a fireside chat, rapid questions, and I have 15 questions, and you get only 30 seconds to answer each question. And there okay. is no pass. You have to answer. Okay? Okay, no Are problem. you ready? Ready. Okay. So nickname your parents used to call you? Mr. Booley and, <laughs> and Pooey. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 30 seconds over. Your most favorite food? My most favorite Alas. food it is uh, kale chips. Okay. Travel destination on your list, which is still pending? New Zealand. New Zealand. One thing that you would never like to do in your life again? Get divorced. <laughs> 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 okay. 
on the on a deserted island what would be the three things that you would want to survive with yeah so i would say music uh i i would i would have to have uh you know a speaker uh w- with music or or at least a guitar it's just a really comfortable bed i love good sleep so if i could get it get an island my partner tests i'd want to have a a friend with me uh, <laughs> not just a friend cool <laughs> we'll get all the all of them transported if that ever yeah. happens yeah. the brand of your denim jacket oh it's levi's <laughs> okay disneyland or dubai uh i haven't been to dubai so i'll pick disneyland <laughs> okay uh crocs shoes or thursday boot Oh, I wear Crocs a lot around here, so I got to be honest. Okay, wonderful. Beautiful memory that you would like to live again. I played a festival in Zermatt, Switzerland, up in the mountains, and uh it was just a magical experience and uh I'd love to get booked for that again because it was so special. Wonderful. Any ce- celebrity that you would like to date? Okay, let's go with uh, Margot Robbie then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. Craziest item in your bucket list, which is still pending. I would really love to go, uh, like to Africa and see like the animals and and like I don't know how to do that ethically and and like, but to really just see like the the the, the wildebeest like you know run through the plains or elephants or giraffes, uh, um, that would be really cool. And and to also scuba dive with sharks, I think would be very cool. Uh. Okay, and that's the best plot for my next question. Which animal language you would like to learn? Definitely dog, because uh, we have a thirteen-year-old dog, and uh, so sometimes something is wrong. We don't know what, and so if I could just talk to her and find out what she needs, um, then uh, I would make her happy, and I would make my partner very, very happy because she loves her uh, more than any other being on planet Earth, even me. <laughs> even you okay if you could ask god one question what would it be what am i here for uh in fact you're creating so much of it already mm. peter would you rather wake up to an air horn blowing in your ear every day or wake up to have a 4 mile run every day the run we we do a a a run with the kids out in alberta every morning so definitely the run what's that something that you would never like to tell anybody <laughs> what is something that i never like to tell anybody <laughs> what kind of a question That's is that question. <laughs> sometimes i drive a little too fast not not all the time but sometimes <laughs> wonderful thank you so much peter i know these were a lot more element that you had to think but i hope you enjoyed it yeah so... i did i did it was a little <laughs> stressful but i enjoyed it <laughs> But before you go, Peter, you would definitely love that you should sing for us for something that you have written for yourself but never gone public. Oh well, I would need to grab my guitar. Uh, I don't have the. Yeah, way- sure. I, I, ha- I could not find the keys to my car, and that's where my guitar is. So, but I had this uh, my little guitalele here, so I ran <laughs> and grabbed that. Lovely. All right. So you want something that no one has ever heard. something that you have written for yourself like okay all right i'll do this one if you need to go i understand and if you need to go i'll hold you in hold you i fly away from pain And all the love you gave is what remains There's just a little bit <laughs> And that's you a very just... lovely bit Oh thank you And any of your favorite songs that you would like to play for us What songs do I play in this key <laughs> Or can I change the key I play so many songs and of course now I'm forgetting that I'm on the spot. <laughs> yeah. Come down, come down, come down from the clouds you in. 
I see what's happening Don't let it this time Come down, come down, come down or Come down crashing You know that it's happening Don't let it this time Don't paint on a picture, don't put up on your wall Don't invite her to the party and expect her to say nothing at all Cause if love's gonna live, it's gotta breathe a bit Needs that push and pull, no fear of losing it If I wanna break from the past If I wanna have a chance at something that lasts Gotta start from the ground up Gotta round up every bit of courage that I've got Learn to love what I don't know, learn to love when I get lost Come down, come down, come down From the clouds you're in I see what's happening Don't let it this time Come down, come down, come down or Come down crashing You know that it's happening Don't let it this time Don't let it this time just a little bit of that song in a lower octave than it normally is. But uh, there you go. That's a one time only performance. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank, Thank you. My pleasure. And uh, I mean, um, let me be very honest. This live singing was more heart touching for me than watching a YouTube video. Thank you so much. But Peter. grateful for you that. Yeah, yeah for my pleasure. Down show and uh, spending time with us it was really wonderful conversing with you Likewise, we enjoyed well. every moment of it and you shared so many beautiful stories and inspirational stories not only for us for our audience too wonderful well thank you Deepak yes. thank you honey and uh, hopefully we'll uh, see you again soon yes yes yeah. we would love to see you in some live event very soon okay yes. well thank you so much thank you thank you okay take care right. Peter have a great take care. day you too bye bye, -bye.